Trainer Lawrence Tuffin trains over 70 dogs at any one time, but it's the odd classy open racer that comes along that really gives him a buzz. Well, I mean, passion has always been the open racing. When I came into dog racing, in a big way, uh, was always to um, run in open racing. And um, I've been lucky enough to do it over the, the years. Um, you know, the graded stuff really pays the wages, so to speak. And, um, but no, I love travelling. I love seeing the other trainers and that away from, from Nottingham. You know, it's a lot better, nicer atmosphere. We need another Tim Wall Baz, and unfortunately at the moment we haven't got one. <laughs> Come around too often. What, what are your beliefs in training Greyhounds? How do you like things done here? My biggest thing has always been galloping. You know, you can have all your wonderful machines and that to treat dogs, which obviously are important. But if you can't gallop your dogs and get them fit to race, um, you know, um, I, I just don't think you can be without it. And the other thing that we do do here, um, we have all the dogs checked over on a regular basis, um, either Tom Peppercorn or George Drake. Tom will come here every three weeks and we'll probably have uh, 20, 25 dogs checked over at a time. Because um, I think if you keep it on top of the small things, they don't become big things. And that's why we touch wood. We don't, we don't lose many dogs at all. You've had some great dogs go through your hands over the years, some of which were way before my time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, two Nicks, he won the Futurity Cup at Nottingham. He held the fastest time for two years on the trot, 29.56 and 29.58 back then. That's back in, you know, early two, 2007, 2008 time. Um, he got to uh, two Category 1 finals. He, he, he got beat short head in the Eclipse uh, by Rev Counter. I've never forgiven Chris Allsop for that. And um, he also got to the uh, Tote Gold Collar final. Uh, I had Commander Chief from Mark Wallace uh, after two nicks. He was a fantastic dog. He finished second in the Tote Gold Collar and he finished second in the Sussex Cup for me. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I had a dog, Charmer, which uh, we got off of Harry Finlay. He started off in an A5 grade at Nottingham. Uh, <clears throat> and I, I'm sure that night he broke his wrist at Nottingham. I, I'm sure he would have broke the track record then. He was an absolutely super dog. Um, we did breed out the sister of that, funny enough, and me brother Tony did have a, a Category 1 winner, Tufty's Pearl Letter, out of her. So... You know, the breeding was there. Uh, Amelia Maid, she was a fantastic bitch for us. She got to two or three finals. She got through two rounds of the Derby that year. And, uh, yeah, look, we've had some wonderful dogs. Wise Diamond, he won the Paddy Power Derby Trial Stake at Walthamstow. That was my biggest, biggest claim to fame then, back in 2007. That was absolutely unbelievable. And we went over to Ireland and, you know, unfortunately we got knocked out in the first round, but... Uh, no, I've had some fantastic dogs. Of course, more recently, Tim Will Baz, who we all know and love. He was a star for you and a great relationship that you had with his owner, uh, Terry Corden, before he sadly passed yeah, away. And he actually gave you a bit of confidence in terms of your training ability, Terry, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, I mean, you know, um, it's easy to knock trainers for what you, could, what you do and what you can't do. And, and, and I'm sure Terry had his own opinions of me before. And, but I can understand why he wanted to move his dogs at the time, because obviously he wasn't very well. Um, and he came to me and said, look, you know, um, I'm not going to be able to travel backwards and forwards to Ireland, so I'm going to move all the dogs to us, which was a great pleasure and an honour anyway, because I know Terry Monslow used to train quite a few of Terry's dogs. Um, and, of course, the way things worked out with Baz was unbelievable. And I do remember Terry putting his arm around me one day saying that you can actually train a dog, which was very nice for it to come from him, because he's obviously had dogs with a number of you know, top trainers in Ireland and that, and uh, no, it, it, it certainly boosted your confidence. And obviously, we had a fanta absolute fantastic time with Baz. Into the third bend, drop zone on the outside with Tinwell Baz, who's trying his hardest. There's nothing between them as they come around the final bend. Drop zone and Tinwell Baz. It's an epic duel as they race up towards winning line. Drop zone and Tinwell Baz. Tinwell Baz has done it. Tinwell Baz wins by a neck from drop zone in the end in the Betfred Steel City Cup final. Dinny, he was a Timwell Dinny, he won for us up at Sunderland. You know, he, he had his moments and of course Timwell Zach, who you've met today, um, he was more of a sprint type but uh, he lost his confidence and obviously retired and obviously now he's a very well-loved pet. 
it's been a big family thing for you in the sense that your brother was involved in sport. In fact, he got you into the sport and still trains now. Yeah, we, uh, I remember being set up in a, in a workings men club and my brother said to me, he says, I've got a greyhound, will you come and parade it for me? And I landed up going to a little track at Huntingdon and uh, paraded it for him and I was bitten. That was it, gone. You know, I was into ground racing, hook, line and sinker. Whereas people, you know, lads of my age had pictures up on the wall of football teams. I had Mott <laughs> Silver, Glimbridge, West Me County. I had them all on my wall. My mum used to think I was mad, but, uh, you know, and I'm afraid once it's in your blood like that, it just doesn't go. Do you think there's a future? I think there is. I don't think, I still think there'll be less tracks um, because... In, Look, until this media rights thing sorts itself out, and, and I just, it's just hard to see there being 20 tracks. I still think there'll be probably less. Um, but it's still a hard one to call. I hope there is a future. I probably won't see the end of it, but <laughs> you're re-educating everybody as far as the um, welfare side and things and that are concerned, and we're certainly getting that way. We, we're going down the right track. You know, a lot of the older trainers do want educating the way things should be done um, and they've got to be seen to be doing the right thing. I'm sure the GBGB, you know, with their stewards and that will be, you know, monitoring that situation and, you know, let's help everybody and hopefully, you know, the future will be bright. One person I don't think needs educating on the welfare front is you. You absolutely love these dogs, don't you? Yeah, I do, yeah. I mean, as you've seen today, um, you know... <laughs> Hopefully the feeling's mutual. They don't want to turf me well, off to a retired Especially home. Especially some of those little girls. They love <laughs> but, you. Um, yeah, that, look, it's always been a big thing for us. We, 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 you know, we, we've always tried to do the best for the dogs. I mean, I, I, the Colston owners, for instance, they've got 40 at home. Wow. 40. You know, they take all their dogs when they've retired, they go home. I mean, do you remember Shambo Beauty that was on TV with broke both her front legs that time you know she's there happy as that injuries can be repaired and you know yes there be, might be the odd one that um, you can't do you know the best for them but at the end of the day there's a lot of good people out there how important is it to you that your dogs are happy yeah look dogs you know dogs have got to be happy to run haven't they i mean they're not going to run if they're you know you get one or two of them that are a little bit subdued in the cells but that's not because they're badly treated right that's just their character and you know i think the dogs have shown you today that they you know they're all quite happy and content as you can see can you hear anybody oh, i can hear nobody <laughs> they got <full> bellies. <laughs> <laughs> but uh no they're you know um if they're happy, then they run for you, simple as. And I'm sure most trainers would say the same.